Hi there, my name is Chris Betcher. I am on the Google for Education team based here in Sydney, Australia, and I am going to take you through some of the key things you should know about Google Classroom and how to set it up for success, and then we'll go and look at some of the more advanced features. But let's get started with the basics for those of you who have not used Google Classroom much before. So this is Google Classroom. Its address at the top there you can see is classroom.google.com, or you can access it through the staff portal. Once you're in Classroom, you'll see these coloured boxes, and each one of these boxes represents a class that you might teach. Uh, I've got a lot of them here because I've used this a lot. Uh, you might not have used it much, and you might not have any coloured boxes, and that's what we're about to show you how to make. From this page, you'll see there's a plus sign up in the top corner, and this lets you either join a class or create a class. Now, I'll just show you, joining a class is typically what a student would do, and when a student tries to join a class, they get asked for a class code, which we'll talk more about in just a moment. For a teacher, however, they click on the Create Class button, and this is where you create a new class, one of these little coloured boxes. So let's just create a class, let's call it uh, Year 8 Maths, uh, Maths, sorry, Maths, and you can fill in all the other bits as well if you like. I'll hit the Create button, and that will create the class. Now, when you create a class, it's probably a good idea to just set up a couple of things first to make sure this class works the way you want it to work. You'll notice that it has it put this little picture at the top here for me with the x, y coordinate graph thingy. And um, uh, it's, it, it will automatically use AI to pick an image for the classroom that it thinks is probably suitable for maths. This is a good image. If you don't like it, you can click on the customize button up here. And there's always the ability to go in and select different photos. There's actually a maths and science category in here. So uh, you can see there's a few mathsy, sciencey things you can pick from. So you can do that. I'm happy with what, the way it is. Uh, if you want, you can also hit this upload photo button and add your own photo if you'd rather do that. Uh, that's okay too. Uh, and of course, you can also select your theme color, which is like the color of the headings. Uh, I'm okay with this the way it is, so I'm just going to say cancel, and that's fine. Now, if you're brand new to Classroom, uh, there's essentially uh, four different areas in here that the teacher sees. There's the stream, which is this page, and it's kind of like a social page where you can put announcements and reminders and don't forget your homework and remember to bring your books, whatever it might be. You can have discussions on this class page. Uh, on this page, both students and teachers can interact with it, although you might make a choice about how that happens, and I'll show you that in just a sec. There's also a classwork page, and classwork is where we create all the work. And you can see in here, there's the ability to create assignments, quizzes, questions, material, or reuse things you've done before, which is a bit of a time saver. There is a people page here, and this is where you will see your students. And as your students come into this classroom, their names will be listed here, uh, and that's where you'll see everybody. If you have additional teachers, like a co-teacher or an assistant teacher or a prac teacher, you can also click this button to add them in here as well. And finally, there's a marks page. This is empty at the moment because we haven't done any work in this class yet, but this is where you'll find your grade book. So those are the four sections, stream, classwork, people, and marks. Now, let's just go back to the main page again for a moment. You notice there's a class code here. This class code is the thing that a student would use to join this class. So a second ago, I showed you if you try and join a class, it asks you for a class code. This is the class code. Every classroom has its own unique code. If you use the code, you'll be entered into that class that matches that code. That's how students get into here. Uh, but before we get into some of the deeper subjects, some of the ways you might think about setting up your classroom. First of all, this gear wheel up in the top corner, if we click there, you'll see this is where all the settings for this class is kept. So if you need to go back and change any of those descriptions we saw before, um, you can come in here and add that sort of stuff in there. <laughs> Maths, there you go. Um, uh, and so on. So down further, I mentioned on the stream page, both students and teachers can work on that page, can enter content onto that page. You might want to change the way that works. On the stream here, right now, students can post and comment, which means they can write anything and they can start new conversations. And to be honest, sometimes it gets a little bit crazy. <laughs> You might want to change this so students can only comment. So teachers can start the conversations and students can engage with them, but students can't start their own conversations. Maybe you prefer that. Or maybe you don't want students interacting on that page at all. Maybe only teachers can do both of those things. You can change that to that as well. My personal favorite is the middle one. You can choose whatever works for you. Uh, in terms of the way the classwork shows up, 
you can either have the classwork appearing not at all, so you can hide the notifications for new classwork, you can have the whole thing appear on the stream, or you can have like a mini condensed version of it. I like the condensed version, so I'll leave that. Guardian Summaries is a feature inside Google Classroom where once a week, if you turn it on um, and you put the parents' contact details in, uh, it will create an email and send it to the students uh, parents once a week uh, with a list of work that's missing, work that's coming up, uh, and a bit of a summary of what's happening inside the class. It's a big time saver if you would like the system, classroom, to be able to do some of that work for you in terms of keeping in touch with parents. And then down here you've got a link for generating a Google Meet call. Google Meet video conferencing can be integrated directly inside classroom. The neat thing about if we include a Meet link for the classroom, and I know we're not in the pandemic anymore, so we're not doing remote uh, learning, thank goodness. Um, but you may find times where you still want to do a video call for some reason. You can use the Meet link directly inside Classroom. The neat thing about it is that if you use the link from within Classroom, students cannot join the call until a teacher is present, and students can't stay in the call after the teacher has left. So it's a really safe way of doing it. It actually creates a brand new Meet call every single time. Uh, and students can't reuse it and come back in and hang out without the teacher there. So uh, from a duty of care perspective, definitely try and use that if you're doing video calls with students. Uh, and then finally down the bottom there is marking. Uh, I mentioned there's a grade book in Classroom. Uh, you can, once you start entering tasks and having grades or marks for those tasks, you can get Classroom to either do nothing with them, just leave them, or add them all up so you see the total points. Or if you want, you can weight them by category. I say you might put, say, I don't know, classwork, homework, exams, different categories of work, and then you can weight them. So, you know, say classwork is worth 50% of the overall mark and homework is worth 10% of the overall mark and so on. You create those categories down here by clicking Add Mark Category. So I'd call that, say, you know, classwork, and I'd say it's worth 50%, let's say, um, and so on. And I'd keep adding categories until I had all the ones I wanted. They do have to add up to to 100%, obviously. Uh, I'm going to just turn that off for the moment, but think about whether you want to use that. It's, uh, it's quite a useful thing. Uh, once you've set up all your settings, you can save the page and exit there. Now, that is basically some of the things you need to do. Think about setting up your classroom. Uh, and the other thing you might think about is on the classwork page, if you know the topics that you plan to teach, so maybe in year eight maths, we're doing some algebra, I might want to create a topic heading here and call it algebra, oops, I need to type in there, algebra, and say add, and it creates a topic heading, and um, you know, I'm, I don't know another topic, um, I'm actually not a math teacher, sorry, uh, numbers, right, so you can create these, these different topic headings, and um, as you create work, it will go into these topics. If you don't like where they are, you can pick them up and move them around, so you can swap them around, drag things on this page. So there you go. Those are some of the key things that you should know to get set up with your Google Classroom. Uh, let's move on to some of the more advanced stuff and see how all this works.